Aloha and welcome to our allele video. Um, in this video, we're going to compare dominant and recessive alleles. We'll describe how alleles can work together. We'll define what a link gene is, and then I'll talk briefly on the relative influence of the environment on traits. Okay, to begin, we're going to start our discussion. We're going to talk about two words that you're going to hear an awful lot, and that's going to be genotype and phenotype. The genotype is what's going to express the genes of a trait. And remember that we have our trait, and our trait is any physical characteristic that we can see, but that trait is going to have two different things. It'll have a genotype and a phenotype, and then there'll be several different ways that trait can be expressed, and those are going to be the alleles. So an allele is a variation of a trait, and we'll just kind of have to remember it that way. Now, when we're talking about genotype, we're talking about the genetic code. And the genotype is what we don't see. It's what letters it's going to have is the easiest way to express it. So this tells me which alleles it has. So if we look down and we take our genotype here and we look down into our example with our tall pea plants, the genotype is going to be the letters that we see right here. Okay? And then we have what we call our phenotype. And our phenotype is going to be the physical representation of the alleles. And that's going to tell me whether I have a tall or a short plant. Okay. Now, there's a couple other words we see down at the bottom here. We see this homozygous and heterozygous. Homo means the same, so that means that both alleles for that individual are going to be the same. So it can be a capital T, capital T, and the other example of a homozygous trait would be a lowercase t and a lowercase t. Now the other word you see is heterozygous, and hetero means different. So we'll see this individual here has a capital T and a lowercase t. Now you might be asking, why do we have capital and lowercase letters? Okay, well that's kind of telling us a little bit about how the genotype is going to be expressed as the phenotype. So we'll have a capital T, and that one there, when it's capital, is we generally are going to say that it is a dominant trait. Okay, and what that means is that if the individual has this capital T in part of its genotype, then in its phenotype, these individuals are all going to be tall. And we see that in our picture with our homozygous and our heterozygous because they have that capital T, it makes for a tall plant. Now the opposite of this is this lowercase t, and this lowercase t is what we'll call recessive. And the only time we see this recessive trait is when there's no capital T's to mask it, to hide it. So the only time we see this recessive condition is when it's homozygous recessive, and that's how we end up with a short plant here. Now, because we're talking about just simple, whether it's a capital letter and it's always going to capital, show that capital phenotype, or whether it's going to be a lowercase letter, we call this this simple dominance. Okay, it's real simple. If it has a capital T, the capital T shows. If it doesn't have a capital T, then it's going to be this lowercase t, lowercase t, hetero homozygous condition, and we're going to see that recessive trait, such as a short plant. Okay, so simple dominance works out pretty easily, and it's kind of simple. That's why we call it simple dominance. There's other allele relationships as well. Um, one of them is codominance, and in codominance, a lot of times what we'll have is polyallelism, which means we have more than just two alleles. So we don't have a capital and a lowercase. We might have others, and the most common example for that is going to be when we talk about human blood, and we're talking about specifically blood types. Okay. In our blood types, we have two dominant traits. We have the A blood type and the B blood type. So if it has a capital A or a capital B, it's going to be that blood type, or that blood type will be expressed. So we have an allele of a capital A, a capital B, and then we have our O. Okay. So now we look at the individuals and what their genotypes are, and that tells us what type of blood they have. So if they don't, if they have an A, it's going to show as an A. So here we can see that these individuals are going to have an A type here. And they can be AA or they could be AO. All right. And we have our B type here. And our B is going to have a BB or it'll be a BO. Okay. And our type O can't have the A or the B. So we know these are all going to be OOs. 
But what's interesting is when we get the capital A, capital B, then we become a type AB blood. So it's both the dominant trait, the A and the B, they're co-dominant because they both express what they're showing. And we see this with blood type. That's probably the best example there is. Now we can also have what we call incomplete dominance. And incomplete dominance means that that dominance is there, but it doesn't kind of show everything. And we see this in some flowers. And we'll notice that if we take a red flowered individual here and we cross it with a white flowered individual there, the red is going to be what we would consider a dominant trait. The white's going to be the recessive trait. However, when we read these two together, the offspring here, this RW, they're all going to be pink. And it's kind of a mixed phenotype. So we can have several alleles that are expressed at the same time in codominance, or we can have kind of a blending of the alleles is what we see here with incomplete dominance. Now, our last slide, we want to talk a little bit about what we call linked genes. Now, the fruit fly is really commonly used, and the reason it's really commonly used is it only has a few chromosomes. But the reason that that makes it interesting is if we take a look at here on chromosome number two, we see that it has all of these different traits. And I'm not going to read all of these for you, but you can see that there's a whole bunch of different traits here. Now, because all of these traits are on the same chromosome, what that means is during segregation, when we start separating these chromosomes out, what we notice is that these traits, because they're on the same chromosome, tend to stick together. Okay, and that's what we call these linked genes. Linked genes are going to be genes that are on the same chromosome, so we see them kind of passed along together. Okay, so that's all I have for you. I wanted to tell you a little bit about how the environmental impact, what trait is shown. And we'll talk about that real quickly. That's like if one allele is preferred, it fits in a little bit better. And when we talk about evolution, we'll see this in natural selection quite a bit. But there is a link between the two. So that's all I have for the video. Once again, sorry, these ones tend to be a little bit longer. Um, good luck with the lessons. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.